Hey there, fifth grade friends, and welcome back to another week of math here on BCPS TV. It's your dynamic duo of Mr. Tang and Mrs. Machi to discuss and break down lesson one for the week of May 25th to May 29th. Today we will be finding the area of polygons on the coordinate plane by decomposing them into familiar shapes in order to understand the area of polygons can be found using known area formulas. Now this is a long one, so let's take a second and just break that down. So we're going to be focusing on polygons on a coordinate plane and being able to find the area of those polygons. And we're going to do this by breaking them down into shapes that you might be more comfortable with. We've worked on finding areas of different shapes already, so this should definitely be more comfortable for you. Because using known area formulas is going to help us to better understand and make sense of the polygons that we may not be as familiar with. Let's get started by thinking about how we can find dimensions of polygons on a coordinate plane. I bet you already know what polygon this is. In previous units, we learned how to find the distance between two coordinate pairs on a coordinate plane. To find a distance between ordered pairs located in the same quadrant, we use subtraction. Let's find a distance between ordered pairs 3, 8 and ordered pair 3, 2. Which coordinates are we going to focus on? Not the x, because those are both 3. But the y's are different, so I can find a difference between the y coordinates 8 and 2. 8 minus 2 is 6. So the length of this side. 6. We can then look to find the distance between ordered pairs 3, 2 and ordered pair 10, 2. Which coordinates should we focus on this time? Not the y, because those values are the same, 2 and 2. So let's go ahead and find the difference between the x coordinates. 10 minus 3 is 7. So that means the length of the side here is 7. So we have six units between ordered pair 3, 8 and ordered pair 3, 2. And then we have seven units between ordered pair 3, 2 and ordered pair 10, 2. Since this is a rectangle, I know that opposite sides are congruent. So we can go ahead and label those. Six and seven. We have a lot of information about our polygon now. Do we have enough to help us find the area? Hmm. For more on polygons on a coordinate plane, let's go ahead and turn to our friends at Pearson. As you watch, think about how you can decompose polygons into shapes that you might be more familiar with in order to find the area of polygons on a coordinate plane. Remember, the area of a rectangle can be found using, by multiplying your length times your width. The area of a triangle can be found by multiplying one half your base times your height. Take it away, Pearson. How can you find the area of a polygon on the coordinate plane? Think about this question during the lesson. The floor plan for a new stage at school is sketched on a coordinate plane. Each square represents one square meter. A flooring expert recommends bamboo flooring for the stage floor. How much bamboo in square meters will be needed for the floor? 
Make sense of the problem. To find the amount of bamboo flooring, you need to find the area of the polygon. Why do you need to find the area of the polygon to find the amount of bamboo flooring needed? The area tells you the amount of space covered by the stage. How can you find the area of the polygon? You can decompose the polygon into known shapes, find their areas, and then add the areas together. Think about the area formulas you know. Find the area of the polygon. First, decompose the polygon and find the needed dimensions. The polygon is decomposed into which shapes? How do you find the dimensions of the shapes? The polygon is decomposed into two rectangles and a triangle. To find the dimensions of the shapes, count the squares between vertices. Find the areas of the triangle and the rectangles. What is the area of the polygon? Add the areas. 10 plus 24 plus 55 equals 89. The school needs 89 square meters of bamboo flooring for the stage. Now you know how you can find the area of a polygon on the coordinate plane. Now we're going to turn to Mrs. Machi for another way to take a look at this. Take it away, Mrs. Machi. Let's think about how we can subtract parts to find the area of a shaded figure. To find the area of the blue shape, we must first find the area of the blue shape and white square in the center combined. Next, we will count the length of each side of the figure to determine the area of the whole figure. We can see that this side of the polygon has a length of eight units. This side of the polygon also has a length of eight units. The polygon is a square with side lengths of eight units. To find the area of a square, I can use the formula area equals side squared. So eight squared is 64 square units. Now that we know that the area of the blue shape and the white square in the center is 64 units squared, we will need to find the area of the white square in the center to subtract that part to find the area of the blue shape. The square has a side length of four units, so the area is 16 square units. Since we know that the area of the combined shapes is 64 units squared, we can subtract 16 units squared to get the area of the blue shape. The area of the blue shape is 48 units squared. Now you know how to find the area of polygons by subtracting parts. I couldn't have said it better myself, Mrs. Machi. Way to go, boys and girls. Now it's your turn. If you have access, feel free to work through the Triad section, and when you are ready and comfortable, check out the Show What You Know section and complete the assignment there. If you do have access, you should be completing Dreambox le lessons, about six to eight lessons per week. Remember, you first need to log into BCPS using your own username and password, then access Dreambox through the instructional and productivity tools icon. Well, that's it for us today, boys and girls. You did a great job and you have a lot to be proud of. Feel free to watch this video as many times as you need. And as always, stay safe, wash those hands, and do the math.